Hi, I'm Catherine Kyle from greenfiggies.com and today I am so excited because I am interviewing Brittany Watkins from brittanywatkins.com and she is a weight loss coach and an emotional eating specialist and the reason why I got in contact with Brittany and why I, I found her on a website to start with was because I was really struggling myself and this is why I wanted to, to bring this to you because I was having a problem with Eat, overeating, eating too much and it's quite hard for me to admit because I actually sell weight loss products. I have meal plans and I have filling green smoothies uh, and recipes that helped me to lose weight three times now. I've lost a lot of weight in my life uh, twice after pregnancies and um, I had no problem previously with emotional eating or anything like that and I was um, I'd, I'd lost weight successfully. I wanted to share this with the world and I created this, this diet plan based on all the types of food that made me feel really good, really healthy and helped me to lose all this weight. And then I found myself, as soon as I launched this product, um, it, was, it was really difficult for me because I was not able to, to lose the weight myself. I was about, not, I wasn't too much overweight, maybe about 14 pounds overweight. But it was enough for me to feel like I am overweight and I'm not a good role model. I'm, I'm feeling like a failure because I am not able to get to a healthy weight myself and I've launched this product to the world. So I was, and I, I was going on for about a year and a half. I was kind of stuck in this, in this place where during the day I was eating healthy food, the food that I knew was really good for me that helped me to lose weight in the past. And then in the weekends and the evenings, I was just binge eating and um, eating because I felt like I needed a treat and I felt like I needed to eat this junk food. And, and I just, I, I knew I didn't want to do it and I would beat myself up afterwards and, and feel really guilty. And I, I didn't know why I was doing this. And I just, I came to the conclusion it must be emotional eating because I know what to eat, I know what I want to eat and I'm just not doing what I want to do. So I... I, I thought I need to get some help with this emotional eating, so that's that's how I found Brittany, and uh, she does EFT, and she'll she'll explain more about what that means. But this was a technique that that I just started using that was working so well for me. But she's got some other techniques that work, that I'd never seen before that work that worked so so well for me. And I took her I took a free quiz, and it really opened up my eyes to what the main problem was for me, something I had never heard about in my life, that I just thought, this is, this is something new, and I really want to explore more. So I, I took her program, her, her weight loss program, and her, um, learned all about emotional eating, and for the first time in my, in my life, I really felt like I knew why I was emotionally eating, and not just that, but I learned all these I learned all these techniques, and actually, I felt like such a weight had lifted, <laughs> such a, a weight had been lifted off me, <laughs> and then the weight actually did start to to drop off after that point. And now, um, um, my weight is still going down, and I, but the, I actually feel like I'm back to the fit, the stage in my life where I feel like I'm really excited about health. That I, I don't have any cravings for the this uh, junk food anymore. I don't feel the need to treat myself with junk food and I just want to treat my body with healthy food and that's the, the place I always wanted to get to. And um, I just I was just so excited about the transformation this had made for me in so many aspects of my life that I can finally be the role model that I want to be and the inspiration that I want to be for, for you as well. So um, I just wanted to introduce you to Brittany and um, let her explain to you what she does and um, about her weight loss blockers. So uh, thanks so much, uh, Brittany, for, for being with us today. I'm so, so, so happy that you're with us. It's so exciting. Thanks, Catherine. That's so sweet of you. And, you know, I really just want to congratulate you for being brave enough to come out in the open and share this struggle, because I have to tell you, it is way more common than you would even know. I have a coaching certification and I work with health coaches and that's one of the most common things I hear is that 
people, health coaches, you know, maybe they have a following already, or maybe they're just really trained and, you know, they're really, really healthy, but they still struggle with food cravings or they still struggle with these unhealthy eating patterns. And it, so I just, first of all, just want to say, like, I think you're so brave and I think it's amazing that you're coming out and sharing this with your community because most people don't do that. Most people hide behind this problem and it's a problem that people need to talk about and, and it's a solvable problem. Um, but most people don't think, you know, that, that it is, and there's so much shame, you know, when you're health, when you're preaching healthy eating and, you know, you're preaching all these things, there's a lot of shame involved with that. So, um, so just, you know, thank you for sharing that part of your story. And, you know, I think it's just so awesome. And, you know, I, I truly believe that especially as health coaches, we all go through things for a reason, right? So like, you know, you've gone through the struggle for a reason and now we're sharing this, you know, information with people in your community that, you know, they might have this problem as well. So, you know, I think that, that you're just a catalyst for, you know, change with, with other people, which I think is really, really cool. Thank you. Yes, I definitely think it's really common and people don't open up about it and, and say what their, you know, the problems are. Because a lot of it is, even if you know what to eat and, and how much to eat, you still can't stop yourself from, from eating the things you don't want to eat and overeating. And that, that was my problem. I, I, I couldn't understand why I was still eating these foods that I didn't want to eat. And, and um, yeah, I'm just so thankful that I found you. Ah, oh, that's so sweet of you. Well, let's talk about that because, you know, it, this is the, this has like been my mission in life <laughs> because just like you, I had the same problem too. And, you know, where I was like, I was a healthy person. I knew how to, you know, eat healthy. I knew how to follow a plan. Well, I didn't know how to follow a plan. I knew about eating healthy and following a plan, but I just couldn't make myself stick to it. And that's the number one thing that I hear from people all the time is, Brittany, I know what to eat. I know that I should exercise, but I just can't figure out why I can't make myself do it. You know, and there's so much shame involved in that, right? Like there's, you know, you feel so bad about, um, you know, about knowing what to eat and not being able to follow through that, you know, the shame and the guilt and all of the negative talk to yourself, you know, that makes the overeating problem even worse, right? And so it just, it develops, it makes the binging from what I've found even worse than it is just kind of naturally. Um, but over like the 15 years that I was researching this problem, like I literally like committed most of my life or ha half my life at least to um, figuring out, solving this, this mystery. And it didn't happen all at once. It happened very gradually. First I solved one part of it and then I solved another part and then I solved another part. Um, and so over the course of, you know, maybe 15 or 16 years of really studying this, I discovered that there's something called weight loss blockers. This is what I call them. So there's, there's seven subconscious conscious, they're psychological weight loss blockers. And if you have even one of them, you will not be able to lose weight no matter how hard you try. Or when you lose weight, you'll end up gaining it back again. I don't know if you saw that. Um, there's a, been a Biggest Loser article that's been going around about how they all have gained or how a lot of them gain weight back and how hard it is for them to stay at their, at their weight once they, you know, once they come home. Well, it's because of weight loss blockers. And so today I want to talk about the three most common ones and we'll kind of explain, you know, where they come from, why people have them. And then, you know, the people that are watching can maybe take some notes and figure out, okay, you know, if they have that weight loss blocker, um, and then I'll explain some stuff that they, that they can do about it. Cool. Okay. Um, so the first, the first weight loss blocker that I found, um, is something that, pretty much everybody has. I, I don't think I've ever met anybody that doesn't have this weight loss blocker. So this one's called, my feelings are stuck in the food. And what happens is, so I've studied the subconscious mind for years and years, right? So like I realized that um, I was always attracted to psychology and therapy from a really, really early age. And um, so I studied a lot about the mind and I realized that if I was going to take control of my eating behavior, that I had to kind of trick my mind into doing it because I couldn't willpower myself into following a plan. And so I learned about this thing called the subconscious mind that actually controls 80% of the decision-making power. So I was like, okay, let me learn about that. So I studied neuro-linguistic programming and all the EFT and all these other things that work with the subconscious mind. And so, you know, in working with the subconscious mind so much, I've, I'm always asking the question, you know, what's underneath this? What's underneath this? What's at the core of this? What created this? What caused this? And so when you have, um, you know, we've all had the, that experience where we buy things and we're like, oh, we can't keep that in the house, 
right? Because you think about it, you obsess about it, you know it's in your fridge, you know it's in the cupboard, you keep going back and, you know, eating it over and over. Um, and so a lot of people that try to be healthy or lose weight, they keep things out of their house right? Because it, it's almost like the food is calling to them, right? They can't think about it while it's in the house. They have to eat it. So when you have experiences like that, um, it's typically because we've had an early childhood experience with that food. So the best way to do this is to have everybody think of a food that they just love. So, you know, for a lot of people, it's chocolate or pizza or pasta, you know, kind of the staple foods. But for some people, it's like coffee or Diet Coke or, you know, whatever. So just think about that food that if it's in the house, you know you're going to eat it. And then the question that I always ask people is, now think back to some of your earliest memories or your earliest experiences of eating this food. Now, most people will be transported back to a time that was really positive for them. So like if it's cookies, maybe they'll remember baking their co you know, cookies with their mom or their grandma, or um, maybe they'll remember going for ice cream with their dad on Sundays or, um, you know, big meals with where there was pasta around and pizza. You know, there's like, a, you know, a lot of families that enjoy, you know, big meals and that's kind of how they bond and get together. So what happens is because you have all these, pos because you have this really strong positive association and positive experience with food, what happens is your brain hardwires information and it says eating this food is going to make us subconsciously remember all of those good feelings, right? And so when, if, you know, when cookies equates love and comfort and like grandma's love or mom's love, I mean, it's no wonder that you can't stop eating the cookies, right? Like who could ever get enough of mom or grandma's love, you know, or comfort and relaxation. You know, sometimes I find that um, crunchy things like chips or, um, or, co or crackers, things like that will cause people to feel relaxed and calm. So, you know, if you've had a really stressful day and you just want to feel relaxed and calm, you know, maybe that was the way that, you know, your best friend soothed you when you were getting out of your bad relationship. You know, it doesn't always have to be from childhood, um, too. I want to say that. So sometimes I had a woman that went on her um, honeymoon to Paris and they were eating macaroons during their during their honeymoon. And when I was working with her, she had this really big problem with macaroons. And so we went back to, you know, when she first got married. And so, you know, that was such a positive experience for her that every time she would eat a macaroon, it would remind her of her honeymoon in Paris, which I mean, who wouldn't want to feel like that every day, right? <laughs> After a bad day. So it makes sense, right? But you know, these are the things that nobody's talking about. And this is why you're like, oh God, why, you know, I feel like a crazy person. Like, I know I shouldn't be eating this, but like, I can't help myself right? So, you know, this is, this is why I'm so passionate about getting this information out here because, you know, I want people to know that it's, it's not about their willpower and they're not crazy that, you know, they're not a bad person. It's just that you've got these weight loss blockers and basically your brain has the wrong information. So what we have to do, so like your brain works like a filing cabinet, right? So every, all the information that we um, experience, all the experiences that we have and the, the decisions that we make about those experiences get stored in these filing cabinets, right? And so right now your brain has cookies and mom's love in the same filing cabinet. And so all we have to do, literally, it's actually so easy. We just have to give it different information. We have to say, no, 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 mom's love goes over here and cookies are here. And so that way, when you break that connection, you get to keep both of these feelings. So some, you know, some people always go, oh my gosh, you're going to take my cookies away from me. I love my cookies. You know, and you can even tell like the way people talk about food, like I love my donuts. That's how you, that's how you feel. Oh, I'm getting a random call from somebody. That's how you feel when, um, when you love a person, right? Not a food. So what you, so what you do is you just give your, your brain information. You just say, okay, mom's love is here. Cookies are here. And then you don't have, then you can have the cookies, but without going overboard, you can have just one or two cookies and feel satisfied and go, okay, you know, I feel good. And I feel, you know, I feel calm and relaxed. I don't need the cookies to feel calm and relaxed. So that's the cool thing. And I mean, I'm sure you experienced this, right? In the, what was the food that you worked on in the program? Yeah, it was chocolate. It's, it's quite a common one, but yeah, it was just driving me crazy. I couldn't have chocolate in the house. And if my husband had chocolate, I asked him to hide it away from me <laughs> yeah. and it straight from the fridge or straight from the cupboard and not bring it into the lounge because I couldn't resist it if I saw the chocolate. 
And uh, yeah, I, I just I was amazed when I when I did this technique as well. And um, just last week, I went out for a meal with my with my family, and my parents, and and it was definitely based on a on a positive memory with my family. We all used to play board games at Christmas, and we used to get a big box of chocolate and divide the whole box of chocolate up into these bowls. So we just used to sit and eat all the chocolate in one go and just have lots of fun. And I, I couldn't understand why I always needed to eat all the chocolate. I couldn't leave any left. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that was a big revelation to me as, as to why I was doing it. And um, yeah, we went out for a meal and, and my whole family, a lot of them got this chocolate cake. And for the first time ever, I wasn't tempted. I didn't want the chocolate cake. I didn't have any cravings. And I just, I, I thought I'm full. I don't even need anything at all. I can just sit here and just watch the meat chocolate cake. I didn't feel anything at all. So that was the first time that's ever happened. So that was that was amazing for me. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's amazing, Catherine. That's so cool. Yeah, I I mean, and that's exactly that's a really good example of how this works. Is like it's not a, it wasn't a struggle, right? There was no willpower involved. You just naturally didn't want it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know that was that was kind of my intention with with coming up with these techniques was that I know for me I, I couldn't sit there at a dinner table and watch everybody in my family enjoying cake and not share in in the festivities like I just felt so left out if I did that right and so my whole my whole desire has been to shift the brain chemistry so that you actually don't want it instead of having to force yourself not to want it which, you know, I think is how most people teach. It's like, no, I shouldn't eat that. Don't eat the chocolate. We're going to be good. And, you know, I think, yeah, I just, I just think that that's exhausting, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the second most common weight loss blocker. Um, so this one is called the I don't want to make them feel bad weight loss blocker. And so what this one is, is it's, We'll do another visualization for this actually. So imagine you are your ideal weight and you're all dressed up in something brand new and you feel amazing about yourself. You look amazing, you feel amazing, you feel confident, you're standing up straight. And now if you imagine being surrounded by all your friends and family members, all the people that are closest to you in your life and everybody's looking at you and they say, wow, you really lost weight. You know, they're pointing it out. They're noticing you and this big transformation. So in the visualization, just go around the room and look at who's upset and who's, you know, who's got a weird reaction that's making you feel strange, right? So some of the things I hear sometimes is, oh, well, if I lose the weight, you know, I'll make my husband feel bad. Or maybe he'll feel insecure. Or maybe, I'll, maybe my feelings for him will change. Maybe I'll have this new body and I want to go out like on the town dancing and see if I can get a better deal, right? So these are all really scary things that people subconsciously think. Now, it doesn't mean that if you look, or, it doesn't mean that these reactions are real, right? Everybody in your life will probably be really supportive of you if you lose this weight. But it just, it just shows what your subconscious mind is thinking will happen if you lose the weight. So these are the good reasons that you have to hold on to weight, right? So like, so maybe your, um, maybe your. You know, the, another really common thing is that you have some friends and the way you guys connect with the, as like girlfriends is, you know, you talk about your latest diet or you complain about how fat you are or how fat you feel or, you know, whatever, right? And so if you all of a sudden become successful, how are you going to connect with them, right? That's another really common one as well. And so, you know, I just want people to know, to notice, you know, what their, these are, you know, these are subconscious beliefs about what will happen if you lose the weight. And, um, you know, it's just, it's a lot more common than you would think. And unless somebody tells you to think about these things or to do exercises like this, you wouldn't ever think, right? Because there's a, there's a logical part of your brain that says, oh, my husband will just, he'll love it, you know, like everything will be okay. He won't be jealous, but there's this softer, very, um, you know, smaller voice in the back of your head that goes, well, what if he's not? Well, I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe something will change in our relationship. Right. So do, do you remember doing this, this exercise in the class? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and the, yeah, you, you don't think about it before, but there's definitely people in your life that are not so happy that you've lost the weight. And that's happened to me before. Most people are, but there's, there's the few that are not happy for you. And they'll kind of make criticism saying that you're getting too skinny. Yep. 
that you you looked better when you had more meat on you and your cheeks looked fuller or you know whatever it was that and so those things definitely get stored in your mind and you, you they're part of your programming so yeah it's very very good to be aware of them yeah absolutely i had a i had a woman who um she lost 60 pounds and she was like in her I don't know, late fifties or something. It was, you know, it was a really commendable thing that she did at, you know, that point in her life. And her best friend said to her, you know, you've really changed since you've lost all this weight. And this woman, she just like, I mean, she just had a heart of gold. She didn't want to hurt her friend and she didn't want to be a different person. And so she ended up putting all the weight back on because of this one thing that somebody said, right? So it just goes to show how deeply people's opinions really affect us. And unless we're conscious of it, unless we, you know, work on it and again, tell the brain, that's their opinion. This is my body and I get to, you know, be the way that, you know, I want it to be. Unless you do that to your brain, you know, every time this happens, you're going to binge or, you know, put some weight on or, you know, have a you know, have a, have a bad weekend or, you know, whatever it is, how, whatever your behavior is. Yeah. 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 So that's a really common one. And then the last one is, um, something that's, that's probably, it's probably the strongest weight loss blocker. And it's the, the blocker that most the weight loss coaches or most people, they might know about it, but they're, um, they're a little bit scared to talk about it because most people don't have a good solution for it. And what I found is about 80% of the people that I, that I work with suffer from this. And um, we call it the I'm too sexy weight loss blocker. And the reason that we call it that is because it actually deals with sexual attention. So, you know, pretty much everybody knows that, you know, when you lose weight, men they they have a certain like biological thing in their mind that they you know they like and when you become more shapely you get more attention right from men or from the opposite sex um and a lot of people feel really uncomfortable with that. And there's a few reasons that that happens. The number one most common one is that there's been some form of sexual abuse in their past. And sexual abuse in my vocabulary ranges anything from, you know, actual sexual abuse where we, we know the definition of that to anything that made you feel uncomfortable in your body. So a violation of sexual boundaries. So, you know, an example that I always give is um, a little girl who was on the playground and a boy came up to her and said, Said, I've got these special glasses on and I can see through your clothes and you know she she thought that he was telling the truth and she thought that he could see her naked and so you know she always talked about this her whole life and that really made her feel uncomfortable in her body and so when you feel uncomfortable in your body what do you what what is the natural thing to do it's to protect yourself right to create a boundary a barrier don't come in you can't this is my body right so we like to build a barrier around ourselves and the most common way that women do this is through adding extra weight on their body and you know some women will add two or 300 pounds of extra barrier weight on their body. And some people only add five or 10. It really just depends on how your psyche deals with this and how protected you feel you need to be. Um, you know, but, it's, but this is the thing that, that most people don't talk about. And I, I also find too that a lot of women will say, well, you know, they'll kind of like diminish certain things that have happened to them in the past, not realizing that the, the sexual um, violation was there um, or the boundary violation was there. So I even had recently a girl in my class whose grandmother used to always um, make comments about her body. And, you know, I think as women, we're a lot more sensitive or, you know, many of us are a lot more sensitive than, um, you know, than our counterparts. And we, we feel things really deeply. And so when somebody makes a comment about our body or they're always pointing out something about our body, it feels really unsafe, right? And so her way to protect herself from that attention was to add extra weight on her body so that her grandma wouldn't comment so much. She didn't know how to say, grandma, please stop commenting on my body. It makes me feel uncomfortable. She was too young to, you know, she didn't have anybody to talk to about it. She didn't even understand that this was happening to her. And so the only way her subconscious, again, is trying to take care of her. You know, in all my research, what I found with this is that the subconscious mind and the extra weight is actually trying to take care of you. It thinks it's there for a good reason. 
right? All of these things that we're talking about are really good reasons to hold on to the extra weight. And so, you know, unless somebody says you've got to lose weight or you're going to die in two weeks, your subconscious mind doesn't have any reason to let go of these because they're really good reasons. You know, oh, I'm going to, you know, my, I'm going to tarnish the relationship with my best friend. I'm not going to be able to feel love and comforted. Um, you know, I'm not going to be able to protect myself from predators. These are all really good reasons for us to hold on to the extra weight. And so unless you, again, move the information in the filing cabinet, your brain has no other information other than it just thinks it's doing, it's doing something positive for you. Yeah, that makes so much sense. And yeah, there's just the, the, the information in the course was just amazing. The, um, the everybody kind of opened up and the way you, you handled everything. And it was just such an eye opener for me that, you know, all these things exist and in people's minds and that there's so many different reasons for, for stopping you from losing weight or reaching your ideal weight. And um, yeah, most people have no idea that, that most of the reasons are emotional. Yeah, they, they don't, they really don't. So. You know, I'm just, I'm so happy that I was able to be here with you and share this information to your community. And, you know, if it just helps one person, like that's, that's good for me. So, um, so yeah, so thank you for, for inviting me here and for sharing this with your community. It's really cool. Oh, thanks, thanks so much, Brittany. That's, that's so, so helpful. And I'm sure that's going to be so much help to, to everybody because I know that there's lots of people who, who follow Green Thickies that are struggling with their weight and they don't know why or they're eating the right foods and the weight's still not falling off. And yeah. um, this, this is the kind of thing that's missing from the missing piece of the puzzle for a lot of people. So that's why I really wanted to, to fill that gap um, in knowledge yeah. and bring this to people. So uh, yeah, that's so, so helpful. And is there anything that, that um, people can do now if they want to, to learn more or um, you know, go to your website or anything that they could do to, to help them? Absolutely, yeah. So we have, um, we actually have a, a diagnostic quiz that can tell people what their strongest weight loss blocker is. So I, I highly recommend that people um, take that quiz. Um, so you've got, you've got the quiz on your website, right? What's that URL again? Yes, the URL is greenthickies.com slash BW for Brittany Watkins. So greenthickies.com slash BW. Yeah. And um, it's a really good, you know, there's, um, it's a really, really good, it'll give you a lot more information than, than what I was able to share on the weight loss blockers here today. And then it'll also give you an opportunity to come to a live training with me where I will take you through the exercise to get rid of your food cravings. And we'll talk about all seven of the weight loss blockers. Um, so that's how you can find out more about it. And, and then also go to my website, BrittanyWatkins.com to, I've got a bunch of blog posts and videos. I've got lots of videos on YouTube and things like that. So if people want more information, there's, there's lots of stuff out there. Thank you. Yes. I highly recommend you go and do that, that quiz because when I did it, um, that was such a big eye opener for me. I just couldn't believe that, that the quiz managed to diagnose exactly what the problem was for me and something I, like I said, I'd never heard this before. And I thought, I just have to learn more. So I watched your webinar and the, the information was just amazing that you shared in the webinar alone. So I, I highly recommend people go over there and check that out because I think, I think they'll learn so much. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Catherine. That's so cool. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Brittany. I, I really appreciate all your time. And um, thanks so much for all the help because I know it's changed my life. So um, I know that you're going to carry on changing lives. So thank, <laughs> thank you so much for everything you do. You're so welcome. Thank you for what you do as well. All right. Bye, Catherine. Bye. <laughs> Bye.